What is going on guys? Lux here from the MD Journey where my job is to help you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. In this video, I'm gonna answer a question that I'm sure many of you guys have, especially if you're about to start your clinical rotations, which is what do I need to do to have my attending give me honors on my evaluations? And it's a question that I had and really there's no clear answer. And so I've set myself up with systems and techniques that I use on every single rotation that I hold to be important. And they've helped me get honor evaluations from essentially every single one of my attendings. I can count on one hand um, the amount of attendings that have given me a grade aside from uh, honors. And so I wanna share with you what I think those important traits are of a third or fourth year medical student. Hopefully you can take them on your rotations and excel as well. So uh, let's get to those tips, but if you enjoy this video and you like what you hear, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. We're growing much faster than I ever thought we would at this point uh, in the, the YouTube channel. But no more time to waste, let's get to that intro. All right guys, so what do you need to do to get evals, I say honors from your attendings? And so I'm going to give you four to five things I think to be very important um, as a third year or fourth year medical student. The first thing to get honors uh, from your attending is to stop worrying about getting honors. And it sounds, you know, like um, counterintuitive to not necessarily worry about your grades. But I find that the, the med students who struggle the most are the ones who are stressed out because they're concerned about a grade that honestly is only 50% of your control. I would say 51, 51% 50 of your grade is dependent on everything you do and uh, the effort that you put in, the stuff that we're about to talk in the, lesson this, the rest of this video. The other 49% is just your attending and it varies. You know, unfortunately your clinical rotations are very subjective even when you put in your effort. So 49% is out of your control. So you need to just relax, do what is in con your control and your final grade that goes on that computer system, on that paper is not in your control. So you can only control the stuff that we're about to talk about the rest of this video. So the first tip is to stop worrying about getting honors because that makes you more stressed out. You look like a gunner. You start doing things that aren't you. Um, you spend excessive hours with you know minimal results. And so it just makes your whole third year experience terrible. I think that's why a lot of students dread uh, their clinical rotations because there's always that end of the, the semester or end of the um, rotation grade that they're some worried about. But there's not that much control you have on a good portion of it, which is the final grade that goes down. So instead, do what is in control. So tip number two, you need to be a stellar part of your team. When you first start your clinical rotations, you don't probably don't have a lick of clue of what's going on. Um, the medicine is still like going over your head. You don't know the treatments, that's okay. You need to be able to contribute on anything you think you can. So if you are a part on your internal medicine rotation and uh, a family wants to talk to a care provider, they have some questions. If you feel like you can answer those questions before your resident gets up, just say, you know what, I can do it. I'll go talk to them and I'll let you know if there's anything I can't answer. They are probably busy writing notes, putting in orders, dealing with consults. And so if you can save them, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of time and go talk to their family members, that will show. If you can, you know, go um, talk to the nurses and get um, the patient's history, things that you may have forgotten when you admitted them, those are all important things. So act and figure out where um, on your team you can contribute. Start taking away the little tasks that your interns and your residents have to do and do them yourself. So discharge summaries, you know, sign outs, give good practice, putting in orders and pending them if you're allowed to. Um, start writing your, you know, your discharge instructions, things that you can do that are in your capability. Make sure your residents are good with you doing them, but be a stellar part of your team. And so always be willing to be the first one out of your seat when one of your patients needs something, a resident gets paid for something, and just be there. My job, you know, right now I'm at one of my sub eyes. Um, in the cardiology ICU. And I always tell my intern, the intern on my team that my job is to make his job easier. So if I'm not doing that, that means I'm sucking as a fourth year med student. So keep that in mind, be a good team player and just be always ready to take care of the minute uh, tasks that you have to do. It's not scut work, it's work that's totally in your capabilities. Um, and so look at it like that. Those are opportunities for you to excel, for your residents to you know, enjoy your presence and that's gonna show to the attending because they'll know that you're being a, a good part of the team. So that was uh, tip number two, which is be a great team player. And those are different examples that you can take away. Number three is you need to improve your patient rapport. 
for some reason, I think med students struggle with this the most and they kind of think that they'll develop this over time. And that's because they only see their patient in the morning, maybe when they're around, uh, and then when they see them with the rest of the attending. But we're just very awkward with our patients, especially when we have other people that are evaluating us, watching us talk to our patients. But you need to build a good rapport because if you can build a good rapport, you can crack jokes with your patients, you can make them smile, you can make them comfortable. Um, you can make them trust you, even if your role is at the very bottom of the food chain when it comes to the medical hierarchy. If your patient is comfortable with you, when you talk to them uh, in front of your attending, you they'll probably trust you much more than they will trust their attendings. I've had patients who it was clear within the first few minutes of the conversation they were having with my attending that they had no idea what my attending was saying. And they looked at me as if I was going to jump in. Obviously, at that moment, I didn't, but I told them I would come back and explain to them, you know, what changed in their treatment plan, what we were going to do. And they felt comfortable. And your attending can notice that when the patient is looking at the medical student for comfort and, you know, an answer. So you can serve that role if every morning you try to build rapport, checking your patients in the afternoon, the evening before you head out, you know, seeing them two to three times a day, knowing things about them, Telling them that, you know, if they're in pain, that you understand it's difficult. Um, the last thing that I'll share with this part is I've shared with this in the future in, in past videos, which is use this line. Use this line when you meet your patients for the first time. Say, my name is fill in the blanks. My name is Lux. I am the medical student on this team, which means I will have the most time to spend with you. So if there's anything I can do for you, if there's any questions I can answer, if there's anything I can get for you, please let me know. I'll be happy to help you. Even if they don't take you up on that offer, they know that you, they may have totally forgotten your name. They know your face, though. That medical student is going to take good care of me. You know, if I need something, I can look to them for an answer. I can look the, to them to just vent. Um, so be your patient's advocate. Um, build a good rapport with your patients. And don't just try to go into a room and get out by with a physical exam and the history. Like, they're annoyed with people asking them questions every single day anyways. And so you may be the person that goes in and they're actually excited to see um, you because you can have conversations with them on how they're doing, how their family members are, um, different things that you can help them with. So build a rapport and that's going to make your clinical rotations, your third year rotation be so much more enjoyable because you'll have memorable patient experiences that you can take with you for the rest of your life. That's what I have. And your attendings are going to notice how well your patients bond with you. Even the difficult patients, if you can build good rapports with them, then you can be the person, the medical student that goes to talk to the difficult patient when they're having, you know, becoming delirious or getting, you know, uh, anxious. You can be the one that can comfort them and the residents will understand that you have a good, um, you have a good handle on people. So make sure you develop good relationships with your patients. So that was number three. Number four, make sure out of everybody on your team, you are your biggest critic. And that helps you with tip number one. Tip number, tip number one was stop worrying about your grades. And it's easy to stop worrying about your grades if you are the person that is worried about your progression and your growth the most out of anybody. And what I mean is every single day, you need to be able to identify your strengths and weaknesses on a daily basis. You need to be able to tell yourself, I didn't do a really good job in a physical exam. I still don't know how to listen to heart murmurs. Um, I didn't do a good job of presenting a plan or coming up with a plan. And then also obviously think about the stuff that you did really well. I did a really good job building a relationship with that patient. That patient was having a very tough time and I think I did a great job of comforting them. Um, I did a good job of teaching my classmates a topic that my, my attending gave to me. Those are all pluses and minuses, but you need to evaluate them. And then in addition, you need to think about all the stuff that you learned that you don't really understand. You know, if your attending mentions a surgery or if they mention um, since I'm in my cardiology rotation, if they mention a procedure that's done or if they mention uh, the pathophysiology of a specific disease and you don't understand it, you need to write it down. Something that I like to do is I like to have index cards or just like blank pieces of paper like this in my white coat. And every day I just fill it out and I write every single thing that I need to look up. And they can be one small thing like you know, they all may mention the medication. Medical students do this all the time where you hear a med, you just kind of nod, be like, oh, I recognize that. Really, in, the, in your back of your mind, you have no idea what it is. And so just quickly write it down and tell yourself, look up what the medication is, what it does, and what it's used for. Um, that way, next time you hear it, you'd be like, okay, now I actually do know what it is. So you need to be your biggest critic and you need to be the most focused on progression. If you yourself can identify every single day what you need to get better on the next day, 
then your attending is going to see a, a magnificent growth you know, in the week or two weeks or the four weeks that they work with you because you yourself have given yourself feedback every single day. You don't have to wait for your two-week or midpoint feedback from your attending to understand where you can change. So be your biggest critic. Um, and it's really helped me a lot because I don't have to worry. And I really honestly don't give a crap uh, about what my evals are going to say because as long as I think that I was better on day 28, you know, week four, than I was at day one, then I'm satisfied. So be your biggest critic. Be the most concerned about progress. And by the time your attending has to give you a grade, they should ideally see that because, you know, again, that falls in the 51% of the things that you can control. So get to know your patients, be your biggest critic, stop worrying about your grades and be a good part of your team. And that is going to show on your, your rotations. The last part, and I'll give this as a bonus tip, is there's always that concept of being a gunner and like, you know, being that student that's always just like showing and bringing articles when your attending never asks for them. You know, don't be that student. You're again, don't worry about your grades. So don't do things just because you think it looks impressive. But if you do something like this and you're looking up tasks the day before and you realize that even after you look up a topic, like maybe your your attending is talking about how to read an echo and you, you're understanding what they're teaching you. You go home and you look up stuff and there's still questions you have. Um, or, you know, a second example, if there's a patient with a disease and everyone's trying to figure out what kind of what their disease may be. You're trying to diagnose them. Um, you're trying to figure out how to treat them. You go home and look up stuff for your patient because that's what you should be doing as a care provider. And you come up with something. You find a journal article. You look, you know, you find a medication that you could potentially give to them. Ask the attending the next day. Ask your residents. Be like, hey, I was looking uh, about, you know, patient Mr. Johnson who we're trying to treat. And I think I found this article about how we could give him this medication at this dose. It looks like it's been effective. What do you think? That is also showing them, one, you care, two, you're not trying to be obnoxious, and three, you know, you're still putting yourself in the medical student role and you're asking for feedback and you're asking for an opportunity to learn. That has been much more helpful than bringing in articles and saying, oh, yeah, you know, yesterday I read about this random disease just because you mentioned it once. Like, that is BS. Don't do that as a student. But if it contributes to the care of your patient or it contributes to the progress of your learning, absolutely do it and ask questions um, and so that will be the last bonus tip that I'll have for you. So be your biggest critic, try to learn every single day and come back with questions that are authentic and genuine. Make rapport with your patients because that will save you so much stress uh, in the long run and you'll just build a skill that you'll need anyway as a physician. Make uh, yourself a good team player and just do what your residents need you to do before they ever have to ask you. And then stop worrying about getting honors. If you do all of those things, guys, I promise you, you will, in that bucket of 51% that things that you control, you will have it completely full. And you're attending unless, you know, they are just not paying attention. More often than not, will give you honors. And then you won't have to worry about the eval as much. So hopefully that helps you guys. If you have any questions or anything else about, you know, clinical rotations, med school, um, comment below. But if you enjoyed that video, give this a like, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, my friends.